Before we can look at the different types of businesses, we need to look at how they differ or their aspects. So we're going to look at a few because we've got lots of different businesses to consider. So any of the businesses on the screen are good examples of businesses we might look at during the year. Uh, and we just want to look at, first of all, Australia is a mixed market economy. And that means basically the ownership of resources and businesses and properties is split between the public sector. That's the part of the economy owned and operated by the government. And that can be federal, state, and local governments at the three levels. But then most of our businesses are part of the private sector. And what that means is that they're owned by private individuals, groups, or institutions, as in other businesses. And that's the vast majority of what we'll do. So how do they all differ? Well, we can look at the differences in terms of the number of owners, the management and risk profile, the profit distribution, limited versus unlimited liability, and whether it's got perpetuity. So we'll just quickly go through these. First one is the number of owners. So first of all, a business is broken up into parts, and these parts are called shares. Um, and the person who uh, or group who owns the shares is called a shareholder or an owner. You can use those words interchangeably. Technically, this is just for a company, but it implies to, uh, applies to any business. A business is just a part of uh, shares, and people own those shares. So with a sole trader, that person is one owner who owns 100% of the shares. Whereas a partnership, it could be three shareholders, doesn't have to be equal. This person owns this bit, this person owns this bit, and this bit, etc. Or it could be a big company where everybody owns a jagged little piece, and some people own a lot more than others. Um, that's probably most common, actually. So, how do the number of owners differ? Well, we can uh, vary all the way down to one owner to possibly a potentially unlimited number of owners. So, looking at a little, this is a Hawthorne cobbler store. So, fix, uh, fix your shoes and your boots. That's just one owner near the train station in Hawthorne. Um, yeah, that's it. That's that person on his own. Versus BHP. BHP is one of Australia's biggest businesses. It has over 500,000 shareholders. So that's just each person who owns at least one share. So that's the first way businesses can differ. How many owners do they have? And the owners can be individuals, groups, other businesses, or even the government. How else do they differ? Management and risk profile. Well, who's responsible for managing the business? How many? And is the financial risk shared between all the people? So with the cobbler store, one owner, he's the manager, there's no one else there. Can have employees, but there's no one else there. He shares 100% of the financial risk and responsibility for that business. Versus BHP, well, the risk, the people that own the business don't necessarily manage it for BHP. So if you buy shares in BHP, you probably don't work there. Um, and there's, the risk is shared. It's not just put the burden of the risk and uh, managing the business. It's not just on one person. Looking at Australia Post, that's owned by the Australian government. So when you look at it, you could say it's got 25 million owners. Anybody who pays tax is an owner of Australia Post. And the people that own it aren't the managers. So Scott Morrison is the current Prime Minister. He doesn't manage Australia Post. He's got other things to do. What about profit distribution? How are the profits split? So the way profits are split, um, profits in business, we say that's a dividend. So we're going to use that word a lot. A dividend is what the owners get out of the shares of the profits of the business. So are those profits given back to the owners or are they reinvested back into the business or maybe even back into the community? So that's what, another way they'll differ. So for example, with the Hawthorne Cobbler store, let's say it makes a net profit of $100,000. There's one owner. Well, he'll get all of that profit. He gets to share all of it. What about with BHP? Well, in 2019, I think this dates from, there was 512,193 owners. Let's say the profit's 150 million. Um, each person gets a little bit of a share of that profit. That is called their dividend. Each owner or shareholder gets a share of the profits. That's called a dividend. And you get the amount proportional to your investment. So whatever percentage of you own of BHP, that's what share of the profits you get. Street Cafe is another example we'll look at. It's called a social enterprise. Let's say it makes a net profit of $70,000 and it's got four owners. Well, they might take some of it, but they're going to give most of the profits to their community cause, which in this case is local disadvantaged people. So homeless, uh, mainly youth actually, um, disadvantaged and homeless youth. Australia Post, what is the, if it makes a net profit of $95 million? Well, that just goes back to the government and some of it will go back into Australia Post. We've got limited and unlimited liability. Very confusing. We're just going to do a brief explanation now and we'll come back to a separate video to explain it more. But basically, with unlimited liability, the owners of the business, whatever you invest in it, so you say 100000 you are liable for your investment in the business. Plus, if the business goes broke, you can also lose your personal assets. So take these two people here. They could lose their house and their car if the business can't pay its debts. We see this box around here. The owner and the business are considered to be the same legal entity. The boxes around all of them, they're all the same uh, entity in the eyes of the law. 
That is different to limited liability. That is where we can see there's two boxes here. There's a box around the owners and their personal assets, and there's a box around the business. They're separate entities. And what, it mean, what that means is that the owners are liable for their investment. So they've put 100,000 in. They can lose that if the business goes broke. That's just bad luck, bad investing, bad business. But you cannot lose your personal assets. Okay, In extreme cases, if there's fraud, for example, maybe. But for our purposes, we will say, no, the business cannot use the owner's house or car to pay its uh, debts. They're in separate boxes, separate entities. And lastly, perpetuity. Very difficult to understand. Basically, what this means is a business exists in a legal form. So it's created today. And it can continue forever, no matter if ownership changes. So right now in the share market, people are buying and selling BHP shares. BHP doesn't need to re-register itself as BHP2 or BHP3 or BHP4. It's the same business. So if an owner leaves, it doesn't matter. The business will, change, will go on existing forever. It's just the who owns it changes. Um, so yeah, that is different to a business without perpetuity. What that means is if an owner changes, so we've got today and into the future indefinitely, let's say an owner leaves today, you actually need to register a new business. So it's very inconvenient. So now we've registered a second business and another owner leaves. Well, now we've got to register another business and so on. So that is how perpetuity works. Very confusing. So overall, what we're going to get down to is the types of businesses in the Australian economy. And we've got a few to remember. First of all, we've got the private sector versus the public sector. And in the private sector, we've got sole traders, partnerships, private companies, public companies, social enterprises. And over in the public sector, we've only got one. It's called a government business enterprise.